Beneath the Planet of the Apes serves as the first direct sequel to Planet of the Apes and the second movie in the first series of original Planet of the Apes movies. It was directed by Ted Post and sees the return of actors such as Kim Hunter and Maurice Evans as Dr. Zira and Dr. Zayas, respectively, while also seeing the debut of John Franciscus as Brent and the return of Charlton Heston for a couple of brief scenes. After the events of the first Planet of the Apes, a second crew of astronauts crash land on the Planet of the Apes to try and find Taylor and see what happened there. The astronauts are led by Brent, played by John Franciscus. After meeting Nova and finding out about the whole apes ruling the planet thing, he stumbles upon an underground society of mutant humans who are telepathic and worship a massive atomic bomb that has a cobalt covering which, when detonated, can destroy the planet, literally. The missile has Alpha and Omega on it, and they worship it like they're at a Catholic church. Like, they see this atomic bomb as their god, basically. When I started watching these movies last year, all the reviews that I saw of Beneath the Planet of the Apes said that this was one of the weaker entries, but I did keep an open mind. And honestly, I don't hate this movie. It is the weakest of the original series, but there are some good ideas here. However, this movie is very much a mixed bag, but I feel like there is enough merit to warrant a modest recommendation. The biggest thing to take away from the making of this movie is Charlton Heston's involvement. He is only in the beginning and the end of this movie, and that was by design. Heston did not want to return to this franchise, but studio head David P. Zanuck basically saw Heston as one of the reasons why the first movie succeeded, and so he basically said, all right, back the Brinks truck up, basically paying him, paying Heston whatever he wanted, and Heston returned only to say that he wanted his salary donated to charity, which was a very nice thing to do. The director's chair for this movie was a bit of a hot potato. Originally, this movie was supposed to be directed by Rod Serling. However, he was busy with other projects and couldn't separate himself in order to shoot Beneath the Planet of the Apes. Fox was going through a bit of a financial crisis in this time, so they needed a hit badly, but Serling was busy, so he couldn't do it. Another person considered was Franklin Schaffner, the director of the original movie. However, he was in the middle of directing a movie called Patton, which he ended up winning an Oscar for. Eventually, the director's chair went to Ted Post, a veteran Twilight Zone director and director of a seriously underrated Clint Eastwood movie called Hang 'em High. And as if this movie wasn't busy enough with the talking apes wanting to raid this underground nation of humans and destroy them and these telepathic humans who are also mutants but worship this atomic bomb, as if all of that wasn't enough, there was, to the point where there were, there were makeup tests for it, the idea on the table of introducing a half-ape, half-human child, implying some very, very dark things. But it was ultimately decided that the world was not ready for something like that, and so it was scrapped. However, it was touched upon briefly with Taylor and Zira kissing in the original Planet of the Apes, but that was as far as it got. Initially, it was pitched, but that was it. It was just the initial pitch. Like I said, this movie's very much a mixed bag. I like some of the ideas here, but I feel like it's a movie of two halves. The first half almost feels like a kind of remake of the first one, almost down to Brent basically being the Taylor stand-in. Taylor is in the movie, briefly, but it's like Brent has to go through the same steps that Taylor went through in the first one, when it just felt like a bit of a waste of time. And John Franciscus was good, but he was no Charlton Heston. Things picked up significantly once we got into the underground human society living in the remains of New York City, where the temples are made from the remains of Radio City Music Hall, and they basically live in Grand Central Terminal. Like, I love that. I love the design of this world. I love the idea that the humans are basically worshipping this bomb. It's, it's honestly one of those things that 
has a lot of subtext to it that I don't think people pick up on, but I did. This movie really significantly had a problem of picking a lane when it comes to its message and what it was trying to say. They pitch all these good ideas, but I just wanted them to focus on maybe one or two and just focus squarely on that. You got the mutant stuff, then you got the humans who are acting more like humans than the humans, which is kind of similar to what we saw in the original. But then the humans are like talking to each other mentally, so they're like evolving faster than the apes can, and the apes are becoming like they're falling into the traps that the humans did. It's a lot. This movie is a big swing, but it does it's not the home run that it wants to be. It's more of a base hit, I guess. And the movie also has a very weird ending in that Taylor pulls down on the lever, deploying the atomic bomb and destroying the planet. Yeah, so the rest of the Planet of the Apes movies, for lack of a better word, from Escape up to arguably Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes coming up later on in May, are technically all prequels. Don't think about it too much. It just raises too many questions. But at the end of the day, I am going to give this movie a good rating. Now, I do have problems with this movie. However, in the grand scheme of things, I still do like this movie and I do have an appreciation for the effort that it gives. This is a movie that, like I said, it is flawed story-wise, but in terms of the makeup, it's spot on again. I love the design of the human civilization. There are good things here, but if the movie focused up, I think it would have been an all-timer. But instead, it just feels very so-so in a lot of places. Not bad, but not as not as great as the original, but that was a nearly impossible task. If you are a Planet of the Apes completionist, I recommend you watch it, but otherwise you can skip this one. But I pass it off to you. What did you all think of Beneath the Planet of the Apes? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to read what you have to say, and stay tuned for Monday, where I'll be covering, honestly, one of the more a couple of the more underrated Planet of the Apes movies, starting off with Escape from the Planet of the Apes.